my name is Shania. I'm a network rep um, with Jack.org. So we're going to let people start to pile in for the next couple minutes, and then we will get started. I can see Michael has joined us here. <laughs> Michael, I think you're still muted, my dear. Here I am. There you are. Wonderful. How are you feeling, Michael? Ooh, I'm feeling great. I'm really okay. excited to be spending this time with all of you today. I am also excited. I love your shirt, by the way. It's very fashionable. Very in. Uh, thank you. I thought it'd be appropriate. Ooh, love it. Love it. I can see people are starting to pile in. Um, Yay! <laughs> love to hear where everyone is coming in from. So feel free to share in the chat where you're coming in from. I'd love to see everyone from across the country. I am tuning in from Yellowknife Northwest Territories if I have any of my northern people in the chat. Ooh, I see some Nova yeah. Scotians coming in. Emily and Nicole. The Alex from Montreal. Exciting. Oh, they're coming in quicker than I can read them. Well, I'm tuning in from my kitchen if anyone is interested in my cabinetry. My lovely cup of coffee. I see Megan from Guelph. Brian from Winnipeg. Exciting. So Michael, where are you tuning in from today? I'm tuning in from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Ooh, exciting. How was the weather down there? Right? It's, um, it's okay, but it's May, and we normally would expect that at May we would have a little bit nicer weather, but it's, uh, mm -hmm. there, the sun is shining, so that makes me happy. There you go. I feel like we are similar to the Winnipeg sisters up in the north. It is, it's May, but it snowed the other day. So, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of snow coming, but it, I think it's going to miss us. Oh, okay. Well, you're lucky. It, it did not miss us. <laughs> I see uh, Megan said that she loves your glasses, Michael. Thank you very much. I got these actually. Glasses are very expensive, right? Um, so I'm all about finding cheap alternatives to this. So okay. luckily for me, uh, my partner t turned me on to something called iBuyDirect.com where you get your prescription and then you can order really really cheap uh glasses and okay. so i feel like these ones were not that expensive i only had to pay ten dollars for the frames or oh. ten dollars for the lenses uh i think maybe thirty dollars for these and then ten dollars for shipping so in total these cost me fifty dollars wow i hope everyone in the chat box that wears glasses is listening into that because that is a steal yeah and so i actually um what's great about it is if if you are like me and you are prone <laughs> to breaking your own stuff all the time <laughs> you're gonna love this because it's gonna help you um not uh go without your sight after you break your first set of glasses because you'll have another cheap pair ready well, there to go. you go wonderful okay well we see people are coming in from across the country um feel free to share any of your things that you're excited for with the keynote um, maybe some interesting things that we've seen with vse i've seen you guys have all been joining the peer-to-peer -peer sessions i've heard the collab session went great um so i'd love to hear your thoughts on what you're loving so far and what you're excited for with this keynote i buy direct is going to have a flood of new business <laughs> jack.org is going for i buy direct Oh, these ones actually came from a different website called Zenny Optical. Oh my so, God, you're just giving so many plugs for free away here. I know. I have a couple more plugs in my talk that people didn't ask me to do either, but I just want to share the resources. You really need to get some revenue space for your ads here, Michael. <laughs> yeah, hey, if anybody knows the people from these companies, tell them I'm available for commercials. <laughs> Link them to this live stream later on and they can go in and throw some ad space in there. There we go. So why don't we go ahead and maybe get started. My name is Shania. I'm a network rep with jack.org. I currently live in Yellowknife Northwest Territories, born and raised. Um, my huskies might bark, I apologize for that. Um, but I'm currently a nurse here in Yellowknife. So with all this COVID stuff, I'm sure you all understand it's super fun. Um, and I'm joined here with Michael today. So Michael is a super exciting keynote that I've been looking forward to all of this BSE. Um, like Michael said earlier, he lives in Winnipeg and has been born and raised there. Um, from what I can understand with Michael, he understands that youth have gifts. Michael, I'm going to get you to pronounce where you're from later with your, um, I'm going to, I might botch it. Um, I'm sorry as a fellow Indigenous person, but Shama 
Shumatawa First Nation. Um, Shumatawa. Shumatawa. Thank you. Mine is dog grip. It's, it's good to learn. I appreciate you trying. Thank you. Well, I'm from the dog grip First Nation. That's a lot easier to say. So I will. Well, there we go. Exactly. But um, from what I just said with Michael, he believes by leading from example. And he wants to share his gift with others. And he works with educators, youth within the business community, and non for profit non for profit sectors. So I'm super excited to introduce you all to Michael here. I'm going to let him go on now to share his keynote story. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, this opportunity. And I want to say thank you to all of the uh, 250 young people that are joining us, uh, as well as all of our fellow relatives on Instagram Live that are joining us um, for my talk today for the finale of the Jack Summit this week. Uh, I know that our theme for the Jack Summit this week has been not done yet, and I think that's an absolutely fantastic uh, theme, and I'm happy that I'm the last speaker. Uh, thank you. Uh, people are commenting on Instagram from the glasses. Appreciate it. Um, I love that people love the glasses. So basically, um, as I said, my name is Michael Redhead Champagne. I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I'm a helper uh, in and around my community. I'm a public speaker, I'm a community organizer, and I'm a mentor to young people. And so the work that I do in and around Winnipeg is related to trying to support uh, urban indigenous young people with their uh, ideas on how to improve systems and make things better in our lives. And I'm also trying to work with systems so that the systems are listening more to the people who have direct lived experience. Um, and so because I'm from the north end of Winnipeg, and because I call myself North End MC, um, I, I look to the disability rights activists of 1990s who led a really beautiful uh, revolution uh, and advocated for our relatives with different abilities. And one of the things I loved about uh, the 90s disability rights movement is something that came out of it. And I want, if anyone's taking notes, I want you to write this down because it's really profound and it's something that's important, I think, to all of us. It's a term that's called nothing about us without us. And basically, what nothing about us without us means is that if you are trying to do something to support somebody, um, you have to include that somebody in the planning, in the design, delivery, and evaluation of the project just to make sure that that person is able to say, yes, this is what I need, this is what I don't need, uh, do more of this, do less of that. So uh, that's a really important thing that I, I learned from other activists in and out there in the community. People would call me an activist, I think. Um, I call myself a storyteller and a helper. And uh, as I shared, I'm uh, from a First Nation called Shumatawa in Northern Manitoba. However, uh, I have never lived there. And like too many kids in the province of Manitoba, I'm a product of the child welfare system. And that means when I was born, um, my mother, who was an Indian residential school survivor, was not able to care for me. And unfortunately, all of her children ended up in the child welfare system. Now, this is familiar to First Nations, uh, Métis and Inuit families in Canada because we have a history of family separation in this country. And unfortunately, um, I think the solution to that family separation is us trying to bring families together um, and us trying to create families of choice when we aren't able to connect with our own home community and our own family. And so some of the stuff that I do um, in Winnipeg is uh, I wanted to uh, talk about how uh, we don't have to wait. The title of my talk today is We Don't Have to Wait. Um, and what I mean by that is we don't have to wait for a bad thing to happen before we reach out to the people that we love. We don't have to wait for the crisis or the drama or the funeral to, to tell people that we care for them or we miss them. And I want you to think about the loved ones in your life. Um, and when was the last time that you sent a message to them, not because they were in crisis, but because you loved them, to say, I appreciate you. I care about you. I want you to know that you are special to me. Another thing that we have to realize is it means a lot when people that we have a strong relationship with uh, remind us about the gifts that we carry. And so if any of you, and I wonder uh, if you're on Instagram, give me some hearts. And if you're on uh, the webex, I want you to give me some comments. But if any of you ever hear people say this in your circle, if any of you youth leaders hear people say the words, I'm bored, or if you ever hear people say, I'm not good at anything. Now, if you hear people say that they are bored, if you hear people say that they are not good at anything, essentially what that is, is an invitation for you as a youth leader, as a relative, as a helper, 
reach out to that young person and remind them of their gifts. If you don't know how to remind somebody of what their gift is, I have a two-step process I'm gonna share with you that can help you do such a thing. When it comes to gifts, the very first thing that we need to do is we have to ask that person to list three things they like doing. All right, so I'll do this for myself. Three things that I like doing, I like talking, I like playing the video game Tetris, I like doing cartwheels. Those are the three things that I like doing. Um, I want you to think about the three things that you like doing. All right, that's step one. Step two is picking one of those things that they are good at. So first you list three things uh, that you like doing, and then you pick one thing that you were good at. And what you do at that point is then you're able to have something uh, from these young people that says, I have a gift. So if I use myself as an example, three things I like doing, I told you, talking Tetris and cartwheels, I'm not good at two of those things, but I am all right at talking. And so when I'm sad, when I don't feel good, what you can do as my relative is you can say, Michael, you are gifted at talking. You are a good storyteller. And you can remind me of the things that I'm good at. And we can do that for the people that we love. We can remind them that they are gifted. We can remind them that they are special. And it means a lot coming from us. And I want to encourage people. I bet you all of us can think of somebody right now in our lives who is struggling with mental health challenges. Maybe you know somebody who has struggled with suicidal thoughts in the past. What I want you to think about is if you love that person, I want you to send them a message as soon as we're done here that says, I care about you and remind them of their gifts. Remind them of the special things um, that you see in them because sometimes for us it's hard to see it in ourselves. Sometimes it's hard to see my own good thing. But if the people who I love and have respect for remind me in my own times of darkness, um, you get to be my sunshine. So be the sunshine. The reason that we remind people of their gifts is because reminding people of their gifts save lives, okay? When we remind people of the things that they're good at, we can save their life. When we remind people of what we admire about them, we can save their life. And there's a lot of things out there in our community that I want you to think about that can help us and save lives in our community. All right, learning about health and trying to help people have a healthy life saves lives, all right? Love, expressing love saves lives. And I want to hear from you. Uh, what in your world helps save lives? Reading books saves lives. Writing down my feelings saves lives. Expressing myself, um, talking to you like this right now, I think can help us save a life. And so having these conversations, uh, men's circles save lives. Thank you for that. Um, anything that you say to me right now, I will say out loud. Um, Walking with your loved ones saves lives. Thank you. Um, something else I do is I work with a lot of people that are struggling with addictions and our relatives who use substances uh, maybe need us to have a little more empathy and understanding for the pain that they're feeling. Enjoying a meal with your family saves lives. And so we remind people in our community that it's those simple, simple things that can help us save a life. And um, going out for coffee together saves lives. <laughs> this is this is fantastic. And so um, when I think about all the things that uh, saved my life, one of the things that helped uh, volunteering saves lives. That's a good one. Thank you. Um, another thing that helped me because I was separated from my home family and my home community of Shimada when I grew up in Winnipeg's North End. I'm blessed. I'm blessed that I had a family called the Champagnes that adopted me and brought me into their life and showed me that we can create families of choice if we aren't able to connect with families of our own. And so connecting uh, with that family um, in the North End of Winnipeg allowed me to learn from other nonprofit organizations, learn from knowledge keepers and elders about who I am. And so now once I turned 18 is when I really started learning about my culture and I started learning about what it means for me to be a First Nations person, what it means me to be swampy Cree. Um, what it active listening saves lives. Oh, that's a good one. That one's very powerful. I appreciate that very much. 
um, I'm getting other uh, ideas uh, for things that save saves lives, and I want it, I want you to keep them coming. So uh, the other thing I wanted to make sure that we share is um, some of the indigenous knowledge that that helps save save my life anyway. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to uh, share something with all of you called the medicine wheel. So you may or may not be familiar with the medicine wheel, but here's a little picture of the medicine wheel, and basically. Um, the medicine wheel can help us understand the different parts of who we are. All right, the medicine wheel helps remind us that we have uh, a mind, a heart, a body, and a spirit. And if you want to take care of your health, um, yeah, we can take care of our mental health, of course, but our emotions will also affect that. Our physical health will also affect that. And our spiritual health will also affect that. And so if, what I would like everybody to do is I would like you to draw your own medicine wheel here, and I want you to draw in an actual list of all of the different things spread out from here that uh, what are the four things that you can do to take make your heart feel better all right for me it's crying hugging talking to people that i care about what are the things that make my body feel better exercise eat sleep what are the things that make my spirit feel better for me it's playing i like having fun um it's creating things doing art um, smudging, if you don't know what smudging is, it's a ceremony that's good for my spirit. It helps me. That's good for my spirit. And then for my mind, I like learning things, uh, learning new stuff. Uh, I like uh, sharing, sharing ideas that, I, that are important to me with other people. And so all of you can create a medicine wheel of self-care for yourself. And I want you to think about mind, heart, body, and spirit. And uh, what does your mind need? What does your heart need? Uh, what does your spirit, mind, heart, body, spirit, what do they all need? Hopefully by the end of it, you get four actions for each one of these so that what you can do is take care of yourself before you're in crisis. And when you start to feel dark, when you start to feel sad, you can go to your self-care medicine wheel. And what you can do is you have 16 tasks now, four in every quadrant, four, eight, 12, 16, uh, four in every quadrant. And now you have these 16 tasks that you have to go through. Um, before you're allowed to say, I give up, <laughs> okay? And I think what this is, is an example of how indigenous knowledge can save lives. It helps me with my mental health. This is something that is very um, strong um, in my life and it helps me feel balanced. And so all of you are able to do this uh, with yourselves and I want you to take care of your mind, heart, body, and spirit because that's a holistic way of mental health. And why this is so important is because if you're gonna be somebody who reaches out and tries to help somebody else, then you better make sure that you're taking good care of yourself because it's hard to take advice um, in mental health from somebody who's clearly not taking care of their own me mental health. Alrighty, so please make sure you have that integrity in and in trying as best as you can to care for yourself and at least familiarize yourself with this activity because what it can do is it can give you something to talk to other people about when they're um, in crisis and it gives them an opportunity to write down how they're feeling and what makes it better. And then there's evidence. This piece of paper becomes um, evidence that um, things can get better and that I have good self-care and there are things that I can do to care for myself in a good way. So that self-care medicine wheel is the activity that I really wanted to share with all of you. Um, the only other thing that I wanted us to uh, do because I feel like I'm already getting close to uh, the time where I need to open things up for questions um, is I really wanted to just share a, a couple of hashtags um, with, with all of you because if we're not done yet, it means I want to stay connected to all of you in our community uh, after this conversation, all right? So if we're not done yet, I want you to follow me, okay? On different social media, North End MC, that's my name. Uh, the other thing I want you to do is follow along with these hashtags, okay? So obviously we have a hashtag called not done yet for this gathering. We also have our hashtag of Jack Summit. These are fantastic hashtags for us to think about um, because there are things that we can check on on an ongoing basis and we can participate uh, and share these types of activities with folks. 
The other thing I want to share you, uh, Kids Help Phone actually has, here's another example of a plug. Kids Help Phone has an event coming up on May 31st called Never Dance Alone. If you're like me and you like dancing and dancing is one of the things that makes you feel uh, happy, then you can uh, make a team and be a part of the Kids Help Phone Never Dance Alone-a-thon. There's even a website, uh, neverdancealone.ca. You can register a team and then you guys can all dance together. So there's something for us to think about. Um, the other thing um, I want everybody to know is that some of the work I do in Winnipeg with community, with Indigenous young people is also available via hashtag. Um, and so you can take a look at some of the things that we do with Indigenous young people, um, and especially with our anti-violence work, which is trying to build a community and support strong families um, through a hashtag called Bell Tower Family. So I wanna say shout out to all the Indigenous youth leaders in Winnipeg. They do such amazing work, and I've been honored to mentor them over these years. And now that I'm uh, getting started, uh, with my own website. Um, it's called michaelredheadchampagne.com. You folks can go take a look over there and you can um, find uh, my blog and different, uh, especially my blog. So it looks like I have some uh, questions here. Um, I, I would like to answer them. Mentoring saves lives. How do you manage the catch-22 of validity? If we prevent the crisis, people think we overreacted. But if the crisis happens, then prevention is valid. Here's uh, my answer to that question. The way that we address that catch-22 is we have to start measuring the positive things in our life that happen the same way we measure the bad things in our life. If five homicides happen in my neighborhood, um, there are five police teams dispatched, there are five health reports written in the health authority, there are usually five media articles talking about those five different situations. But if I prevent five different homicides, by supporting our community members in different ways, I don't see that reflected in health, in justice, or in media. And so that's why I want us to all start giving more power to the solutions that we see in our community and start measuring more of those. Um, give me the, the measurements that help us get a good life. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to know. Uh, another question I have here is, um, how do we get the messaging across that the mental health crisis uh, and to convince stakeholders that proactive mental health care is actually more effective than reactive health care. Well, I hope you would use some of the arguments that I've shared with you here today to address some of those things. Um, but the other thing that you can tell people is that it's cheaper. It's cheaper to support people um, before the crisis happens. Um, it's, so I just think that's a really <laughs> simple thing for us to say. Um, another question here uh, is, Second question was, oh, first one was Teresa, thank you. And second one was Noah. Noah is also a network rep with, the, with Jack at Oregon. He's a wonderful um, advocate from, I wanna say New Brunswick. Yeah, I just wanted to quickly jump in to let people know in the chat that you're welcome to um, write any questions or answers that you have for Michael in the Q&A box. Um, Michael is a lovely public speaker, as we can see, and very engaged with you guys. So if you would like to verbally ask your question, Please put your question in the Q&A box, but start it with the at sign. I did write a little message in the chat box as well, but he would love to hear from you guys verbally as well. And of course, we'd love to see you here. Um, so I guess we can just continue with questions then, Michael. Hey, not to jump in, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. Sure, um, so why don't we do the next question from Emily Thompson. How can we better identify warning signs when someone is possibly hiding that they're struggling? That's so interesting that you would ask such a thing. Um, I feel like, um, it's really hard. It's really hard to find these warning signs um, when our relatives are experiencing these difficulties. And so that is a very, very difficult question. And I don't have a really great answer, unfortunately. Um, but I do know that if you notice any changes in behavior in people, that's a warning sign, like just sudden changes of behavior. Um, if suddenly they're uh, detached, that's an important warning sign. Also, if they suddenly start giving away a bunch of their personal items, that's a warning sign, right? And then what I'd also like to maybe highlight, um, what I'd also like to highlight is um, there's five golden rules from bethere.org, all right? Jack.org, 
really great website, and it's called be there dot org and on be there dot org it's got something called the five golden rules of how we can actually um support our relatives um young people supporting young people so this is another way that we can make sure that we're not done yet in our mental health journey by following those five golden rules for the people that we love um before they're in a crisis like I said earlier, you really need to be paid more for your plugs. Do appreciate the BeThere.org plug. It's wonderful. Um, something I'd like to ask you, um, just based on the questions that you like, your little concept around the medicine wheel, I did love that. Um, and I think it's really important. Our Indigenous communities struggle, and I'm sure you know that um, being down in the prairies and in the north is such a big thing, and across the country. And we know that our Indigenous communities really struggle to start the initial conversations around mental health. And just the simple concept of checking in with someone and asking, are you okay? But how do you think we can teach our young people in Indigenous communities how to start that initial conversation? It's how can we encourage the first steps of these conversations yes. Yes. In, in our First Nations, Métis, and Inuit communities across mm -hmm. Canada. And one of the ways that I, I have found a success in it is by saying having these conversations and talking about mental health is an expression of intergenerational love. And I like specifically to say intergenerational love because a lot of people talk all the time about intergenerational trauma. And here's the thing that's real. If our relatives pass pain down from one generation to the next, then so too do they pass down love. And I am a firm believer that the love that our ancestors have kept safe and sacred in our teachings and in our languages and in our ceremonies and in our practices um, that love is what makes those things still exist here today. And that love is much stronger than any intergenerational trauma. And so I try to just frame it in that perspective and say, I just wanna, I just wanna have a little bit of intergenerational love. I love that. Chat box here from Elaine. She has a question that she'd like to verbally answer you as, or verbally answer, verbally ask you as well. So I'll just ask if we can get Elaine here on the chat. Sure, that'd be awesome. Lovely. Oh, I see Elaine here. Lovely. Hi, Elaine. Hello. Uh, my name is actually pronounced Eliane. Eliane? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, Eliane. Also, I know like, people normally read it. It's a great name. Thank you. Uh, so my question is, uh, we know that because of the way that Canada is currently set up, we're on stolen land. We know that uh, First Nations, Métis, and Inuit youth are, they're being, they don't have resources, the same resources that other people, whether they're in urban communities or not, have during this pandemic. So how can we better support our First Nations, Métis, and Inuit youth during this pandemic? And how important is it for us to talk about intergenerational resilience which we kind of you kind of just talked about but that was my question <laughs> thank you very much for that question um i think it's so important um especially amid this pandemic um there are basic i think practices in indigenous knowledge um when people reclaim their teachings and their ceremonies and that those way of life there's like so much mental wellness and mental health practices built into it that it's almost like you can't have that conversation about culture or history without talking about wellness. And the example that I'll give you is from my own language um, in Swampy Cree, in our language of in Inu, that's what our, our people are called. Um, we have a word for something that we call the good life. And the good life in our language is called Minopamatisewin. And Minopamatisewin is uh, something that we strive for. It's something that we reach for. It's something that we want for ourselves and something that we want for our relatives. And so Minopamatisewin from a cultural perspective means that everyone has to have love, safety, housing, food, um, opportunity. And so I just think it's really a beautiful teaching once you begin to learn your language and your culture and those customs. Um, I feel like the mental wellness uh, strategies are kind of baked right into it. Thank you so much, Eliane, for your question. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right now. Um, I hope um, that 
answered your question there. I think it was wonderfully responded to. Um, I know, Michael, you talked about earlier that you really like to engage communities to encourage them to do the work themselves and we, how we can support them for it. How do you think we can engage communities initially to do the work that they want to do? So say they want to start some mental health literacy um, campaigns or maybe they want to um, encourage youth to get back into their culture. How do you think we can engage the communities in order to support them for potentially things they'd like to do in the future? I think we can encourage whole communities to take action. I think the best way is always leading by example. I'm sorry that I have kind of like repetitive answers that always go back to the same thing, but um, the best way to, I don't really like encouraging communities to take uh, specific actions. Yeah. I just like saying in my community, these were our problems. These were, uh, this was my problem. This was our solution. These are the actions that we took and this was the result. And so in telling the story of how things came to be, what you did to respond to it, um, and why that was so important to you, um, hopefully there are lessons in there that other communities can learn and take away and apply to their uh, neighborhood. But I think a good example um, that we've seen across Canada is like the Bear Clan Patrol, right? Um, in the north end of Winnipeg, uh, the Bear Clan Patrol began um, providing uh, opportunity for Indigenous people to feel a little bit more safe and to have an intermediary between them and the police. And I think that was really important, especially if we think about all the stuff that's been happening in Winnipeg lately with uh, Indigenous people, unfortunately, um, dying at the hands of people. So it becomes important at this time for us to think about how do we encourage uh, that safety. And I think that's one way. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I see another question has popped up in the Q&A from Caleb Finez, who is also another one of our wonderful network reps. Um, he is from Manitoba, also from Winnipeg, so love the connection. Manitoba, <laughs> yes. He is asking, what do you see as an effective way to move past toxic masculinity culture in particular and encourage young men to be more open? Ooh, great question. I'm really sorry for my answer, but if you're a man asking this question, I think you might be then you have to role model it for the young men in your life. That's the answer. Um, unfortunately, the only way that I know to address toxic masculinity is to be as good as I can to the, the females, women, and two-spirited people in my life. Um, and I know that one of the things that I do is I try not to, here, I'll give you a concrete example. Um, people invite me to come and speak in different groups sometimes, and there'll be like maybe four people uh, that are talking. Sometimes all four of the people that are invited are, are men, are guys, and that's not very cool. So one of the things that I will do often is I'll say, well, I'll take one of those spots. And they're like, yay! And I'm like, just kidding, I'm taking that spot so we can give it to an Indigenous young woman um, because we need to get ladies there. And so sometimes what that means as a guy is using my male privilege um, to get the attention of people, to get the attention of systems, um say hey over here and then when they say oh you man guy over there i can see you you say all right thank you for seeing me and seeing this strong woman who i was trying to get your damn attention for um because she was already trying before like listen to the women get your stuff together so there's a cool thing a little bit of an answer i love that <laughs> i see another question popped up um, from Mary Feltham. So she said, what are your suggestions to motivate ourselves and others to take action? Um, one of the ways that we can motivate ourselves and others to take action is by surrounding ourselves with reminders of why it's so important. Um, what I call them is toes, token of encouragement. Um, so basically what you want to do is you want to take um, a physical object and you want to uh, put uh, emotional attachment into that physical object and then you take that physical object and you put it somewhere where you can see it every day and you tell yourself maybe this is just a color colorful chain of papers but it's not um, this was something that was made for me by a relative by not by a relative by my partner <laughs> um, this was made by my partner it's it's like a relationship chain of power and and bright colorful awesomeness and when i see this little piece of construction paper i'm reminded that i'm worthy of love that i'm worthy of goodness and so we can do that with a little bit of piece of construction paper uh we can do that with anything and so that's one way that i keep myself motivated is by surrounding myself with physical objects that constantly trigger and trick my mind into reminding myself that i am loved and i am worthy 
Love it. So let's continue this train here about talking about others to take action. I have a question here from Jellian De La Cruz. I'm sorry if I didn't say that correctly, but she is asking, how can we better support leaders who are spearheading, spearheading prevention projects and strategies? Um, I think we can better support leaders who are spearheading. Um, oh, <laughs> the best way to support them is by asking them what they need. Lovely, simple, easy step. Um, Can't do something and, without them. Or yeah, them. It, becomes, it becomes really important um, to ask people what they need, and I think that's a simple step that we often forget. We we make it too hard. Um, but here's the thing: uh, when you ask somebody what they need, you're not allowed to be surprised at what they say, because sometimes the thing that they might say is something you don't like. What if what they need is for you to help mop the floors, change the garbage, uh, you know, type something up? What if they have tasks that maybe you don't really like that much? Um, the reality of being an ally to Indigenous people is when you show up, you're not there saying, I'm only going to do these things. Um, you show up saying, I'm here to build a relationship with you. And if there are things that I can do as a helper to support you, please let me know what those are. And sometimes those are not glamorous things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be quite difficult to support our Indigenous brothers and sisters. And I know. Plenty of people struggle with it. I struggle with it as an Indigenous person because sometimes you don't want to speak on behalf of other people, but you want to encourage them and support them the best way that you can. And I think it's completely natural that lots of people struggle that, with that. And I see there's some chats in the um, Q&A and in the chat box as well about this. I have a question here from Alex SD, who's also one of our other lovely network reps. She is asking what resources are available to help Indigenous young people from the child welfare system um, despite the loving foster slash adoptive family, and how can we learn more about their history and culture? She's wondering more about what can she do to better support these people. Well, I think the biggest thing that you can do is um, obviously take leadership from the young person directly. So if that young person is emotionally ready to begin uh, connecting with their birth family or their home community, then you can support them in that. But you also have to be patient, right? We can't project what we want for other people onto them. And um, a lot of history uh, and reasons as to why uh, families uh, get separated through child welfare. And I think that if we do want to support you also understand that um, it doesn't matter sometimes one side of the relationship wants to build it if the other person is dealing with addictions or is not uh, healing well or is just things they're not going to be in a space to even build a relationship it doesn't matter how ready that child is yeah. so um i think what you can do is you can encourage that young person to um to look into their history and seek healing um and let them know that you're there as an ally and a supporter to that um, and if you have extra resources that maybe can help them connect to their uh, birth family, if that's something that they haven't done, um, or their home community, then I would definitely say uh, offer that up as like a menu of what you could offer. But definitely don't ram it down anybody's throat about being like, I want to make sure that you get back to your family. Uh, the pace at which people are ready to heal. I did just want to take a moment and just say that I'm thankful to have this opportunity to connect with Jack.org. I think that um, the work that is being done with Jack.org is so very important and I would love to see um, groups of young people helping young people address their mental health in every single community across Canada. Um, the work we do with Aboriginal Youth Opportunities is almost like a vehicle or a container <laughs> for people to be able to do that kind of stuff. And what I love about the work that we've is um, Aboriginal Youth Opportunities is a group. We call ourselves a movement. We're not a legal entity. We're not a nonprofit. We're not a business. Um, and it becomes important, I think, for us to make sure that we are respecting what we want to do. And sometimes we work with nonprofits. Sometimes we work with government. Sometimes we work with uh, nonprofit, business, labor, government, right? Different groups. Um, but we always make sure the center of the decision making is Indigenous young people and Indigenous youth have the central uh, role in all the things that um, decide. They're the deciders, all right? Well, it looks like uh, I'm not gonna wrap up on Instagram yet. I'm gonna wrap up on WebEx. Uh, there's a few questions uh, that I think people asked on uh, Instagram, um, but I do wanna say that I am so, so grateful um, to have been able to be a part of this. It looks like we've lost Shania, but um, Shania, you- uh, uh, Sorry, I am back. 
Oh, Love in it? the northern internet. You're back. Um, my webcam is not working, but I am here verbally, I think. <laughs> okay. So I think I got to wrap things up uh, on the WebEx now, and I'm going to continue talking on the uh, Instagram on jack.org. So if anybody from WebEx wants to come over to the Instagram, I'm going to finish up uh, answering a few specific Instagram questions in a moment. But um, I do want to say I am so very grateful for the opportunity to connect with jack.org. And I want you to know that we don't have to wait for the bad thing to happen uh, before we reach out to the people in our lives and tell them that they matter and that they're gifted and that we love them and that they are worthy of love and awesomeness. And the other thing is that we are not done yet. Uh, the conference might be over, but I want to make sure that we're following these hashtags and we're finding ways to connect with one another. Um, again, my handle is North End MC. Please follow me and connect with me on different platforms. Because I want to make sure that we can work together um, as a team across this country because I don't want to see uh, a world where uh, suicide is the leading cause of death for young people. And a report came out in Manitoba that said that that is the case for us here. And that's not okay with me. And and I'm confident that that's not okay with any of you. So if you want to be a part of helping make sure that we are changing these systems and supporting young people in a way that they have the mental health supports that they need, that their families know that they are loved and supported, then I want to make sure that um, that, that happens. So please join me. Let's take action. Uh, Jack.org is, is the beginning. Um, uh, Jack, Jack Summit is our little beginning here. Um, but as the title of the conference says, we're not done. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michael. I loved your keynote. I love your messages. I can see all the love coming together in the chat. And please, everyone, go follow Michael at North End MC on Instagram. Go continue to watch his live. Look at everything wonderful that Michael is doing. And we look so forward to working with you in the future, Michael. Yeah, yeah, you're stuck with me now. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting ready. You plugged us now, so you're stuck with us, actually. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Please take care, stay safe, and um, be healthy. Yes. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Looking forward to seeing you at the rest of the events on VSE. Bye. All right. Well, hey, Instagram. Looks like it's only you and me now. Um, thank you very much to everybody who... Uh, has been engaging so far. I haven't been able to give you too much attention and I apologize for that, but that's about to change. That's about to change. I think I'm allowed to talk to you for a few more minutes. Maybe it's 15 or something like that, but I wanted to answer some of the fantastic questions that we have here. Um, uh, let me see, what do we have happening here? Holy mackerel, boy, there's a lot of folks here. Um, thank you uh, for joining me today for my self-care talk. Look at I drew a picture of myself uh, trying to manage all the things in my life here. It's an example of self-care. It's one of the things that you can do. So thank you very much for um, uh, joining me today. Again, uh, my handle is oh, North NMC. Uh, please uh, follow me over there. Um, but I have a question here from Nia Vang. Uh, she says, uh, hi, Michael. I want to know, how can one approach and help youth who turn towards cutting and self-harm as a getaway form negative barriers in their lives. All right, so here's the situation. When someone's using drugs or when somebody is uh, using self-harm practices, um, it's not that helpful for us to ask them, why are you trying to manage, like why are you cutting or why are you using drugs? Um, it's more helpful for us to ask ourselves the question of why are you hurting? Because those actions are the actions of a hurting person. And so I actually, actually made a, an acronym here today. I have to make acronyms for everything. Um, on how to reach out. Okay, so uh, the first thing that you do, the acronym, here, I'll just write it out here. Yeah, uh, let me see if I can switch this baby, this bad boy around. Boom. All right, so the acronym that I wanted to share with you ah, on how best to reach out to young people can best be summarized in what I'm calling dances. All right, dances. Basically, what this means is direct. You got to be direct with that young person and you have to tell them, I'm concerned about your, your cutting or your self-harm. Um, why the pain? All right. Remember, we're asking why the pain, not why the, why are you trying to numb your pain? All right. The A is of, oh yeah, ask. <laughs> you have to ask them directly. What do they need? What do you need? Um, 
And the reason this acronym is DANCES is because it is like a dance trying to help support our relatives um, that are in mental health crisis. Direct ask. All right, the other thing is N, uh, now. Don't wait. All right, please don't wait. Uh, just, that does not look like an N. <laughs> All right, now. Um, don't wait to reach out to your relative. If you care for them, if you love them, tell them now. Don't wait. Uh, the C is uh, making sure that you're being comfortable. All right, you're being comfortable yourself and making sure that your relative is comfortable. All right, if they're clearly not doing well right now and it's not a good time, you got to recognize those things. Okay, E is empathy. I know we can't always know what everybody is going through, but to the best of our ability, if we can have empathy, then I think that'll help make sure that people are cared for, hopefully in a good way. And then the S is um, safety. All right, think about safety. Um, and the number one most important thing is safety planning. So with that young person, if you can do a little bit of safety planning and you can tell them, uh, maybe do a little bit of mind, heart, body, spirit, uh, something like that. Um, maybe what you can do is use that as the foundation for a safety plan uh, for that young person in the future. So anyway, this is uh, dances. I meant to share this uh, earlier when I had the 250 folks on the WebEx. Maybe I'll turn it into uh, an item and uh, an infographic and I'll share it a little bit later. So yeah, dances. I literally just made that out up today because my question that I asked myself was, how do I reach out? Question, how to reach out? And then I made all these things and then at the end I was like, oh my God, it spells out dances. That's my big secret of how I do uh, a lot of my stuff. I, I try to organize it into acronyms so that I can remember it. Uh, Naya is adding it to your notes for future reference. Thank you so much for addressing your questions. Oh my goodness, thank you for asking such a good question. Uh, make sure to save the Instagram Live to our story at the end. Oh, I will. Uh, please make sure it's an infographic. Okay, yeah, all right. We have the request. I will do that on North End MC. Um, I will put dances into an infographic and people can share it around. Um, and I'll tag jack.org as well. And you know why? Actually, that's such a great acronym. I thought it was so weird that dances came together because Kids Help Phone has their little Never Dance Alone thing coming up. So I'm like, on brand or on brand? Anyway, these are, these are the funny things that end up happening. So I'll make sure that I do that so that people can see it. Um, I did post a, uh, there's little buttons here to ask questions if you wanted to. Uh, it doesn't look like we have any at this time, which is fine. Um, because I think maybe it feels like maybe we're coming to a natural end of our conversation here. So, um, I do want to say thank you to all of you for participating here today. Um, again, I'm just going to put, uh, I don't want anybody to leave our chat here until you give me a little bit of a follow over on North End MC, my Instagram account, because again, like I said, we're not done yet. And it's really important for us to make sure that uh, we remain connected to one another because I would love to hear about some of the things that you're working on. I would love to see some of the things that you're doing. I would love to learn about what's working well to support young people and their mental health in your community. Um, because what if there's a lesson that you've learned that I can apply? Just like maybe some of the lessons um, in my community, I hope, um, have been helpful to you so that you can uh, apply them in your hood, in your neighborhood, in your family, in your family of choice. So um, thank you all so much for being here. I really, really am grateful for this opportunity. And um, I don't know how I'm going to say goodbye because I'm not done yet. But I think I think maybe this is, this is me saying I appreciate you. And um, maybe the last thing I'll do is I'll encourage everybody to please do a little bit of affirmations with yourself today. If you don't know what an affirmation is, an affirmation is a phrase that you can say out loud that even if you don't believe it at the time, tricks your mind and body into believing that you're the greatest. So anybody watching right now, I want you to repeat after me. I'll share with you some of my favorite affirmations. Affirmations. Number one, I am not here by mistake. I am worthy of love. I am awesome. I have many gifts. 
I'm so cool. Anyway, we'll stop there. But these are affirmations, right? Maybe you have different affirmations for yourself. Um, but whatever ways that you use to take care of your own mental health, let's make sure that we do that. I want you to take care of your mental health um, because that makes you a much better helper when you're reaching out and trying to help other people too. So thank you all so much for being here. Um, it's not goodbye. It's see you later. Mm, thank you. That is the, that's the note. That's how we finish. This is not goodbye. It's see you later. All right. So take care. Stay awesome. And uh, make sure you send a little bit of love uh, to yourself and a little bit of love to the people in your life who matter before the crisis. We don't have to wait. We're not done yet. Jack Summit. Bye. All right. Take care.